I am Mariko Bolfo, and this is Uncut News. Given the stress of the past year, one would think that people would be pretty happy to say persons distributing their Rona checks in the neighborhood. But, as it turns out, residents throughout the country have been making the poor government workers' lives a living hell. Tom Law says that people have been threatening the clerks and in some instances, residents have even locked the people in their yard, demanding their money instead of the pink slip. Tom Law has asked repeatedly that persons just leave the people alone and allow them to do their jobs. And they will all receive their money, including the squatters, some of whom have already received theirs. So just know if they come to you with a pink slip, just accept it, they'll come back. Just, just don't threaten the people, that's all I ask. And it looks like BK isn't the only errant contractor getting sued by the government. Yesterday, the state announced that it's slapping Courtney Bend Construction with a multi-million dollar lawsuit for breach of contract. While there are several contracts in question, the biggest one seems to be the scandal of bunt that was once called the decades-old historic St. Rose's High School building. They are getting sued for more than 347 million Guiana dollars for failing to rebuild the school in keeping with the contract. The government scrapped the contract with them because after 18 months of work, only 9% of the works had been completed. The engineering company is being accused of abandoning the project altogether after merely conducting a pile-driving exercise. The company had reportedly moved all of their construction and other equipment from the site. They are also facing possible disarmament. So, finally, they are making moves against these errant contractors. Good for the state. A full year and a day after vehicular manslaughtering champion cyclist Jude Bentley, former joint chief of staff and part-time drunk driver Gary Best, is going to learn the verdict of his DUI case on February 9th. Senior Magistrate Clive Nurse is expected to hunt down a decision on the matter. Earlier this month, Best's lawyers Nigel Hughes, Ronald Daniels, and Sophia Finlay got Best free from a dangerous driving case after successfully giving the magistrate a br I mean, filing a successful no-case submission arguing that the prosecution failed to provide substantial evidence to prove that Best was driving under the influence. Now it's time to tell you about Best Buy's car of the day. Currently on sale is his 2012 Toyota Allion. It comes with TV, navigation stereo, crystal lights, mug rims, fog lamps, and much, much more. Pay cash for 3.1 million, or pay down as low as $620,000 with around 60,000 monthly, and it's yours. Call the WhatsApp, 662-0844 for more info or visit their showrooms at Lot 171 Pizza Row Street, Queenstown or Lot 2 Lamar Street and tell them Noriko sent you for this sweet, sweet deal. On Tuesday, one Linden woman learned the hard way that it's actually a criminal offense to call someone an effing cross. Seriously, you can't call them an effing cross. 47-year-old Michelle Daniels of Wizrock Housing Scheme Linton pleaded guilty to the charge, which stated that on January 1st of this year, she used abusive language on Holly Washington. Magistrate Fortune ordered Daniels to pay the fine of $10,000 for the offense or spend two weeks in jail. Daniels was also put on a keep the peace bond for one year and was warned that if she fails to adhere, she will spend three months in jail. So remember what your mother always said, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't call anyone an effing cross. The Ministry of Social Protection is now on a campaign to encourage people to stop beating their children. The campaign called Say No to Beating Our Children aims at doing just that, encouraging people to quit beating their picnic and consider more humane ways to discipline their little human being besides assaulting them whenever they get out of line. Leading the effort is Dr. Vindia Prasad, who is pleading with parents to use alternative methods instead of those that are perceived as the accepted norm, which is beating your child like they stole something. The nationwide campaign is expected to begin this quarter. 18-year-old Bartica resident Kezia King's life was turned upside down 10 months ago after her father chopped her mother to death in front of her and her brother. However, all hope was not lost as her dream of pursuing a degree in social work has become a reality after receiving a full scholarship to attend UG. On Wednesday, the Ministry of Public Service gave King a scholarship after learning of her intentions of wanting to pursue a degree in spite of the obvious challenges she now faces. So, good for her. Who said luxury can't be affordable? Move into your own home in 2021. 
Lenora Estates, West Coast Demerara Properties are within your reach. Move out to the landlord's place and put that rent money towards your own 5,000 square foot property. Call the WhatsApp 592 618 5702 or call plus 1 516 476 2172 for more info. Things seem to be rough in Burbies as police officers over there are planning to bird race for more money. Or at least I'm assuming as much as they are being accused of taking home a few souvenirs after their most recent weed farm bust on Wednesday. Upon arriving at the location of the Kanji Creek, the police encountered a camp where evidence of a family with the children were living. So instead of moving on and doing the job, the merry band of thieves in uniform took for themselves some 14 whistling birds and a grocery list of items, which included a 5-gallon cooking oil, soap powder, milk, and other items. Sources further indicated that a boat used by the police to get to the location was found submerged in the creek with its engine intact. The police are claiming that it developed a leak. Nevertheless, an investigation has since been launched. It's now time for today's run report. Today, the nation recorded 52 new cases. The total number of deaths now set at 170. There are now six persons in the ICU and 580 persons in home isolation. The total number of known cases in the country is now 7,067. So please, people, wash your hands frequently. Avoid touching your nose and mouth and mask up before you leave the house. When you do leave home, try to avoid enclosed spaces and large crowds. And remember to give six feet of space between you and others. Now, let's take a look at news in the region. A magnitude 5.5 earthquake rocked Peru's Marcona district in Nazca Providence on Wednesday, according to the Geophysical Institute of Peru. The institute said the quake struck 62 kilometers northwest of Marcona at a depth of 42 meters in the ground. No casualties or damage has been reported so far, which is great. But scientists are still concerned as there has been a recent uptick in seismic activity throughout the region. One such example is the currently erupting Sufre volcano in St. Vincent. Great news for those of you who are still looking for an affordable smartphone. The sale has been extended. Get the Logic L60 for just $20,000. It comes with one year warranty and free digital prime bundle. Available at Sailor Plus in the City Mall, Starbucks Square, and Sunday opening at Massey Providence and Massey Turkai. Don't miss out. Members of the European Parliament are calling on member states to unequivocally recognize Juan Guaido as the legitimate interim president of Venezuela and welcome the recent extension of EU sanctions. In a resolution adopted on Thursday by 391 votes for, 114 against, and 177 abstains, MEPs state that they do not recognize the legitimacy or the legality of the recently elected Venezuela National Assembly members and continue to accept Guaido as the legitimate president, despite the fact that he didn't even run in this year's elections as he considered them as fraudulent. The EU also demanded the release of 350 political prisoners and targeted EU sanctions against 11 individuals, unlike the US who just up and sanctioned the whole nation. And now for our weird news story of the day. A British man said he spent about 400 US dollars to have a vet examine his dog's limp, but it turned out his canine friend was just trolling him the whole time. Russell Jones of London said he noticed that after he broke his ankle, his dog named Billy started keeping one of his front paws raised while walking, as if he's limping. Jones said he spent about $400 to have a vet examine Billy and even take x-rays of his apparently injured leg, but the medical professional was unable to find anything wrong. In fact, the veterinarian told Jones that his dog was fine. It was just imitating the way Jones walks on his broken ankle. Too many terrible drivers on the road. Don't be one of them. Book a beginner's driver's course with fast learners. Forget asking your relative to teach you. They will haul upon you like use a dog. Fast learners are professional, and they make it easy for you to learn with less anxiety. Call them now on telephone number 690-6868, or follow them on Facebook at Fast Learners Driving School. Moving on to our uncut news, viewers poll question of the day. Every day we pose a question about current events in Guyana, the region, the diaspora, and how you feel it relates to us. So, you give your responses in the comments, and we'll read the best ones in the following episode. Yesterday's question was, with a new American president, will relations between us and them change for the better, worse, or the same? Nicholas Bastio said, our relationship might remain the same, mainly because we have the oil they want. Good point. David Hanif said, the United States wants a better relationship with Guyana because it's benefiting them. Oil. Just somebody said, depends on what the new administration does. Let's not lie, they're biased, 
in doing things, but we can only hope for better outcomes, otherwise it's the same or worse. And finally, Jay Jiram said, Since they're now a dogla gal who is vice president, I'm sure relations will get better with Guyana. She might even visit the land of Mini Dogla. That'd be wonderful. Thanks for your answers, people. So tonight I leave you with this question. How do you feel about the Ministry's campaign to spare the rod? Do you think it will spoil the child, or do you think it's the beatings that makes the child wild? Think about that question and tell us in the comments below. If your response is good enough, we just might feature it in Friday's episode. Anyway, that's all the time we have for tonight. Check us out tomorrow for another. Until then, I'm Nariko Bullford saying good night, folks. Hey, Uncut News viewers, thanks for watching. You can subscribe by clicking on this button over here, or click over there for more news. You can also drop a comment to let me know if you've made it to the end of the video. Goodbye for now!